What's up, friends? This is Jazz finally bringing you, was it part three or number three of what I read and played and what I plan to do in the future now. There are several changes that I am making. For one, there's some things that I'm not going to have physically on me because they're either too big or it's hard to, you know, get to actually show it in a way. So I will just you know ignore that and there's some things that were on my list before that are are not on there anymore either because they were way too time consuming when it comes to the games or as I said my tastes were to change I said that in the other video too so I'm trying my best to be as, as strict this time as I can and not do another video which again I apologize it was a while since I did it but really it was kind of a hassle to I actually read more than I actually played games to a degree but even then I don't fully count them because most of them are comics so speaking of we'll just head with that first I well I technically reread but I never showed them in my previous two videos the first six of the complete library or for better or for worse i also finished volume seven but i'm rereading that again because spoilers hopefully next month the eighth is actually coming out so i finished all seven technically of those books right and i'm going to put pictures of the actual you know covers there rather than show because they were way too big to have right all on my bed but it was it was nice like and plus, I didn't include them in the last two videos, so I really can include them now. They were amazing reads, guys. Now, I just realized there was a lot of things I didn't include in my other video, to a degree. But I, I try to rectify it in some ways, including the ones that I can get out, right, that I didn't include. Which also starts with Garfield at large that was a really decent book I said a good start to the Garfield series and I, said, I don't remember as much of that as I did at the other one but but I just I love the cover I resent that yeah uh, that is I would resent that too Garfield but he's just both a lovable and hateable cat the same time like he's just so relatable in my opinion and oh right I did say that I again I enjoyed the better for worse series right from the beginning Lynn has an, an you know an art to her what she does so just my little review of that and I did finish reading the best of Archie, of Archie Comics, both volume one, and volume two. This series was just a great showcase of this, of this strip, like of the best of it. It's been over, what, it's, well, it's now it's been over 80 years almost 90 years that back then they were over 70 years old so it showed the best of the 70 years that it was released and i really think they did choose the best now will this say at least with number two i didn't have the easiest time reading it because for some reason there were so many creases and when i opened it out of like that i admit i had a bit of a hard time with that which yeah, just just not gonna say it. I enjoyed the the strips overall. It's just I didn't enjoy experience trying to read them. Maybe it was just, and I don't think I even did anything wrong. It was like that. So let's just say they're 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 putting together. They should have done it a little bit better, right? They're putting the putting of together. Like it's, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Like. Let's just say they should have fought before they put the book together. That that little thing would kind of the 
cover would be in the way or all right I finally finished the end and it was the end of the series it's 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 really sad actually like I really enjoyed it and you learned so much although the only thing that I will say that I saw some of the spoilers in the Netflix series is that I don't think they went in full detail of why Olaf hated the Baudelaire's. It, w it was clued in that something happened, right, in, in the books, and but in the adaptation of the, of the TV series, it was shown that it was because of the Baudelaire's, specifically Beatrice, that Olaf's father was killed. But it was barely mentioned in here, or in the series at all. And I, I don't know if that was just a made-up part in the show, but it was heavily implied in here that they, some, they did something to Olaf that made it... It wasn't just the money he was after. It was the fact that they were the children of them. Right? So it's... In fact, that it was the parents that died. So it, they had to have done something quite wrong to him. But then again, just like in this series, it's never been fully implied if it was Olaf who killed the parents. My guess is that it was the man with hair but no beard and woman with beard but no hair. Or wait, hair but no beard and... Okay. You know what I mean? The two evil, you know, Olaf's mentors, right? It was heavily applied. It was them too. But they were doing it for him. I, I, I really... I mean, it's a good book, and it does explain a lot, but there's, there, there's some parts where you're like, huh? What? You know, that is just how I feel through some of it. Huh? What? Not that I didn't understand what they were saying, but it just, they disclassed over some parts, and it, it has an end. Same thing with the TV series in there. They glassed over, they made it. It may have it may have looked like it was Olaf, and it pro and it might have been, but they they left it open that it may not have been Olaf, even though he was he was evil, right? He, that he and he had killed people, that perhaps it may not have been Olaf, but we'll never fully know. I mean, he died in the end. Yeah, spoilers. Olaf dies, but really, well, I suppose that's just for when they got shipwrecked. Still, it is kind of obvious, right? It's called The End. I mean, if Olaf was still around, there would still be, like, what? So many more books, I would imagine. So... I, I still wish the series continued a little bit, even if it wasn't always a f series of unfortunate events, just to show what happened to them. Like, it's it's never been fully applied what happened to them, like, except for maybe Sonny became a chef. Right? Every other thing of the mode layers were completely left, you know, in the final book I believe I finished within this is the Calvin and Hobbes Lazy Sunday book. Like I was saying when I was actually reading it, this was quite a bit easier than that other one, but it still had its hard, its hard moments. But I just, I just loved it, because they were all pretty much Sundays, you know. And Sundays are usually, like, my favorite of them, like, because they're the fun strips, in a way. It, I'll just say, like, I, I swear, next to, for better or for worse, I believe Kevin Dobbs is still one of my favorite series. Garfield is okay, right? Like, I, I still think he's cute and he's clever, but I love books that rely heavy on kids. So this was kind of right up in my alley. And maybe Peanuts would have been too, if I could actually find a way to read. Maybe I should look online, but I can't find any books based on Peanuts. So, or collection based on Peanuts. And the thing is, both Charles Skultz and Lynn were friends, were good friends. So it would have been nice to be able to read some of, and that's the name of the Charlie Bound creator, Charles or Sparky, right? So I would have loved to be able to read some of his work, right? Like he was a 
he was a genuine supporter of For Better or For Worse, of Lynn in general. And like when they were at the, what was it? The Rubens, Charles is like, I voted for yours to win, to Lynn. Like, and he even got so involved that when Lynn was killing off Farley, he said, if you kill that dog, I'll put Snoopy in front of a bus. You know, I'm gonna kill Snoopy off. Like he, he got that invested, you know, in her story in a way, and, it, and I kind of like to also give other things a try, especially if they're fans of Lynn, right? And plus, Peanuts has been around for so long that I've only seen the movies of it, and I've never seen, read the comics based on it. So I would like to see what that is about at some point, but anyway, my point being is, to back to this point, I just... I really enjoyed this. It was nice to read something that was just all Sundays for once and a little bit easier. So now, guys, let's get on to the games that I finished. If I can even find it. There! Guess what, guys? Yes! Yes, 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 I know. I beat it. I beat it. Just for me to die. Okay, again, I knew this was coming. I did know this was coming. But still, I'm so proud of myself. that. I, and you're thinking, oh, how many months ago did you beat it? <laughs> Actually, just a couple of days ago. I was recording this. Yes, I know. I know. I told you this game was a slog, but I did beat it. I got all the way to the last the last dialogue if i can i might include pictures but i may not i probably do have pictures that i can find somewhere but i just okay guys all in all i've been raving about this game for so long raving or ranting about this game for so long is it really okay is it really how i put it yes and no the game is really really good guys all things considered and the thing is it could just be a me thing right my brain needs a lot of stimulation and after finishing everything this doesn't provide it but there are a lot of people who just love this type of thing and I would say this would be a masterpiece for those who do right what is so funny is that in the end not only did I beat the game I don't think I did everything I don't think I got every recipe or anything but I got some of the almost everything that was most important to be done including in the goddess fishing rod which I had such a hard time doing because I didn't go through the fishing to begin from the beginning like I should have I got the golden axe which is an item you could get by using the goddess fishing rod in a certain area I got the sword there's a legendary sword that I got fishing in another area I think that was out in the ocean then I got my child's letter in a bottle I got all of those important things that are kind of hard to get are somewhat hard to get if you don't think of gold right for them I got them more by accidents but I got them right so it's it was an amazing experience that way. Will they say the last few days of me playing this, game days of me playing this, I had the most fun I had in a long time playing this. So maybe I was on the euphoria trip that I'm near the end. But I just enjoyed every single last moment of those last few days in the game. So it's a game, guys, that I would recommend, right? I would heavily recommend, and I did enjoy it, and it's a good game. It's just something that I wouldn't play in continuous mode, if you know what I mean. If I'm playing, if I'm picking this game up again, I'm starting a whole new file, starting right from scratch. This game isn't something you can just continue once you got everything done. You have to go. It's a game you want to start a new game a lot, because you get bored after first four or five years. But then in the end, it becomes fun again. I'll just say I love though that sometimes they'll they'll they'll, they'll like at the end in the bar they'll have depending on who you're really close with they'll have those people there some are hit or miss like Muffy and Griffin or whatever his name is will always be there because it's their bar but a few of them are selected right 
and I, I always made fun of when I was talking to my boyfriend. I was like, yeah, the one of the ones that showed up was that old lady who outlived me, Ramona. I mean, <laughs> I mean, really. And he said he looked kind of like Lady Tremaine. I'm like, so to be fair, she's the sweetest woman except for uh, that I'm salty about this moment. Right? She's not Lady Tremaine in personality at all. Right? She's rich, but she's not. She's very humble and all that. But, uh, but I suppose, you know what? I shouldn't be mad at her. I should be mad at my stupid dog. He was with me since the very beginning, which is like 25, maybe 20 years at the least. He should have been way gone. I mean, so is my cow. All my animals... I mean, I guess they can't die in this game, which, why? That is one thing that I both like and hate. They took away the realism in there. Yeah, your character could die? S the sweet old Nina can die? Like, what is it? Did the harvest goddess somehow bless these animals? I, I just have to know, like... Okay, okay, I should stop this rant. I really should, because this is about other things, too. But I just... I can't help it. Okay, I will give Lady Ramona, because she was about 60 or something, 70 at the beginning, and maybe she could live to be 100, whatever. Right? But even she said, I can't believe he went before me. Said, if I if I had known that, I would have put her in the competition with me and Dr. Badock, who's going to live the longest, and maybe they would have lived longer. The way I, and also what I said to my boyfriend when I was going through all that is maybe the farm labor did your character in. Lady Ramona, for the longest time, didn't have to do much of anything besides walking around her garden. And she had constant doctor care. Your character pushed every day for 20, 25 years, 30 years, maybe. She, even for the beginning, had very good health care, had a lot of money. I mean, so did I after a while. Did you, I'm not saying she didn't work when she was younger, but didn't have to work anymore in her life. So maybe that added to her longevity. So that would make a little sense. They say strength can do bad to the heart. But I don't know. All right. Let's see. I also beat... Pokemon Leaf Green. Now, guys, this was a very fun game for me to play. I like it took a while for me to finish, but I was I played it. I changed up my Pokemon as I needed it, and I enjoyed it. It was a it was a it was a blast, you know, going through all that again, like nostalgia, right? I was right into it, and I beat it before I did a Wonderful Life, so. There's not much for me to say about that, that it was, it was fun, it had a little bit of a challenge to it, but I just, it took the time to level up my Pokemon, it, it was really fun. Now, the last game that I had, well, we'll just say I'll give some honorable mention, an honorable mention. This is a mobile app, but I played the game Mom Simulator, it was just not even really a game, but I played that through and beat it. So, that's just a little thing. I'm not going to go into too much about it. It was okay, but obviously I had to watch a lot of video ads, right? The, okay, when I say it was okay, it's not like a 5 star out of 10. Like, it was it was pretty low quality-wise. But it was just it was just a fun little distraction. We'll just put it that way. But now the real final game that I beat is Kinseed. Now, I will say that this is kind of cheated away too because I used a lot of mods to beat it but really I beat the main game in a few days with the help of the mods now guys some people can't enjoy certain games without mods so I apologize for that but I know the outline of the game and what it's about in a way and what do I think about it well maybe it would have been better if I didn't use mods but we'll just say that I beat it without even the second generation of it because of that. And we'll just say I do think some of the characters are memorable. In a way, and the fact that they have more kids to help balance it out is it's a genius idea. 
that you could continue the generation, which is a great, a great thing, guys. That you could continue playing, right? I kind of wish they had that in A Wonderful Life. Okay. You're probably saying, why? Because you finished everything. Yeah, you know, I suppose that's true. That is very, very true. But it would add a little new to it. Starting over again and having new characters. Like, Kinsey did that right. It's definitely not Bob Simula. Like, it, it's really good for the... For the effort and everything it's put in it. I think it still has updates coming. Right? So, I just, it was, a, it was a fun time, right? I'm glad I got it. I don't regret getting it. And I don't know if I ever do a review, I'll get a more in-depth about it, maybe. But, we'll just say, maybe it would have been harder if I didn't use mods. For, especially, like, the combat mods. But, for what it was, I enjoyed my time with it. Will they say there are games that do do certain aspects better? But to each their own. It, it was a, it was a cute, sweet little game. The story was pretty was was really good. That was one of its strengths to it. The characters and the story, and I definitely would play it again. Now. I think I'll go switch around and put the games that I'm playing before I go to the books that I'm reading. Just while I'm on the topic of games. Now this might seem a little weird, but I am actually playing Scarlet. I beat Violet last time, but I never fully beat the DLC. So I'm playing this game to do the DLC, and that's what I'm counting. I've almost finished the game as it is, I think. But, but I'm, it's taking a little break, but this is one of the ones on my radar for the games that I'm playing. Pokemon Shining Pearl. Guys, I got this for Christmas, and I'm loving it. I'm doing a Nuzlocke on it, and I lost five Pokemon already. But I suppose I got six badges, so five and six, and six badges is not bad. But what is pathetic is that my losses weren't even, what is it, how do I put it? They weren't even good losses. They were losses in trading in the underground. Yeah, not even big battle losses that maybe couldn't have been avoided. But hey, I got to use different Pokemon. I'm using different Pokemon in a way and I'm enjoying it so much. I'm almost out of it. Really, I'm only playing to the main game in this one, though. I'm not doing the post-game in this. For one, it's going to be hard for me to because I skipped out in Fantina's Trainers, which I should not have done in case there was a Pokemon. Like, you only need to see the Pokemon in the Pokedex. And I skipped out on that, so I won't be able to get the National Dex unless I do some real handy work. So, and plus, I played this as a Nuzlocke, so I'd just rather enjoy my time to the end until Cynthia and then put it away and I also would say with this one with this one again I'm planning to complete the main Pokedex at the very least this is going to be the second or third time I've done it so that's cool and I'm going to try to get as many of the other Pokedex now you're wondering why am I playing the DLC is DLC it's a whole new story that's different. I'm planning to beat that because it's a really good story. It's supposed to be really hard, is what I was told by the Edman 64. So I've seen that epilogue, guys, and I know, I know, but it still seems very cute, right? So I want to play it for myself. Now, some of the other games that I'm playing are pretty much, I think, either on the system. Pretty much now. Well, this say I'm going over games that I kind of was playing, in a way, but I've on it off. Now I'll just say for now I'm putting the Magical Melody on hold because it's a long game to play. I might go back and redo it and play it later, but that's just how it is. I am thinking of finally going to play Earthbound again. Eventually, I'm going to try my best to get as far as I can in it, because this game is a game that I really do want to play and beat, and I think I can be capable of doing it. 
I just got to sit down and put the amount of time in it and enjoy it, right, as I am, right? Like, the games I'm selecting now are just going to try to be very selective. You know, games that I know I will enjoy, in a way. So, what other games have I been on and off? I've been playing Sunhaven a little bit. Now, guys, this is a game that will be on and off. This game probably won't be completed in the next long time. But I'm messing around with it with mods. So, I'm just... But I've enjoyed it. I've just played it on and off. So this is a game I don't think I will complete at this point. But it'll be kind of like a back burner game too. But less so than Magical Melody. It'll be a distraction game. Alright. What else? I'm thinking of picking up the game Unpacking. A nice easy little game. I just got for Christmas. Something easy, you know, enough. And relaxing enough. That I probably could beat. So... You'll see that probably in the next video, which again, guys, this video, this series is going to be a very stagnant series. It's what I think I got enough done of each category, and especially if it's the ones that I've done, right? So, let's see. What else? So I said unpacking I was also sort of played Ooblets again. I might continue that a little bit because I do like the game. I'm just going to have to be very careful, you know, with it because it's a game that I never played for a little bit but I really like. And I believe the final game that I'm going to put on my playlist and the Ooblets and the Sunhaven are sort of on and off. Right? So, that is counted, but not. But the final game that I'm thinking of playing is Cooking Companions. Back to that again. I really think this would be a good change of pace for me. It's a horror game. It could be something I could just put on if I wanted change of scenery. So, yeah. I believe that'll be all that I plan to play. But, I might add to it. And you'll see if I add to it or finish another game. You'll see now, guys, this is going to be a little iffy section of what, I've, what I'm have what i reading, or plan to read. There's been some changes, and I think I'll bring up the two main changes now. I am removing Matilda from the list for now. I will read it someday, but I've watched the story. I know about it a lot, so I don't think it's warranted to read it. Just at this point, right? So that is off the list, and or the... DNF did not... Well, no, I didn't even start it now. The Watership Down. For now, guys, I decided to collectively DNF it. Or did not finish it. Until I get better at reading. And someday it'll be back in a vlog, but for now it's a DNF. Watership Down just a little too complicated for me. I think Stephen King would be easier for me, but guys, there's nothing on this list of Stephen King. Not in the least, so... Again, just like the games, these are up to change, so... I am still reading... Deathly Hollows. I am on page two seven, or 372, so I'm making my way through it. I gotta just get to reading it. I haven't had much... Op well, I did. I just haven't had much energy opportunity to, but I'm gonna try to make a time that I designate to read. Sit down and read this, or read something, but mainly this. So, I, when I read it, I enjoy it a lot. It, it, it's, I'm starting to understand it more than I did last time. I'm getting into the characters and their qualms. And their, also their good moments. Like, I am related to these characters more than I did when I was in high school. We'll just put it this way. Ah, I don't know if you notice, I actually was wearing my Huff, new Hufflepuff. This could be a new fig on top of my hat. I just figured. All right. I am reading, speaking of Garfield, I am reading Garfield Ways In. This is the fourth book. I do not have the third. The one thing about these books that I did mention that I don't care much for is that there is no actual... What is it? There's no actual, you know, number on each page. So I have to write them down as I do it. And I'm now on page 53 of this, so... So, I'm, really, I'm enjoying this book, though. Besides that, it, the strips are very clever, and... 
I just just love it. And he, he said he actually went to cat show. That is surprising, actually. Now, guys, this section again, as I said, is a bit bigger than some of the others. Because I was deciding on what I was going to read. And I put quite a bit there to have a variety. But I've switched. What did I switch for Matilda? Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. I think I've only watched the movie in a long time ago. And that the book I hear is is different. And that I would really love to re read it through. Cause remember when I did that countdown about those kids. And I said that I heard things from the book. Well, I would actually read the book. And see what it's all about, right? And how different the kids' behaviors are in here. So, I I'm looking forward to reading this. I will read Matilda someday, but right now I want to read something that's a little bit more newer to me. Like James and Giant Peach was to a degree. So, I wonder if this will be easier than James and the Giant Peach. I don't know. The that was quite a hefty one for, for a kid's book. I'm just telling you. Now, I am still on the vent above the auditorium. Well, they say I love Goosebumps, but I've been reading more challenging books lately. And I'm going to try to finish this at least in this section, even if I don't... Trust me, guys, just, just, just telling you. The things in this list aren't going to be all finished before my next one. This, are just, this just gives me what shows you what's on my mind to read and what gives me options to read. And if I finish them all... Fantastic. That's a bonus. But if I finish two or three of them and I DNF a lot of them, okay. It's just, I want to enjoy it. That's the point with video games and books, to enjoy them, right? But anyway, again, I'm looking forward to reading this. I hear this is a very good Goosebump book. Maybe this might be my next read to have a break. Because lately I haven't been having a break from reading Harry Potter. I've been reading that is why I was slower on the other books, but maybe I'll take a break and read this. Now guys, I have a couple of different books here. First one, yes, this is still on my list, the book of three. I think I'm going this before any of the other ones, you know, in that genre. But as I said, I've been reading so much Harry Potter that I didn't, have even, didn't even read a Goosebump book. So, the only other books I've been reading were comics, which again, I'm rereading volume 7 of For Better or For Worse 2. So, the book of three, I hear from the Advanced D4 that this is a very good series, so I really gotta get on to reading this, and I will as soon as I get my mind to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what it's about. The Lion, the Rich, and the Wardrobe. Yes. Guys, again, I'm putting myself, giving myself some options here. This is, I said, I does it. I've heard of the series. I haven't fully watched the movie series. So I'm thinking of maybe going to this. This probably is easier than the Book of Free. Maybe, at least at this state. But I want to up my game to give myself another option because the Book of Free is the only book I have in this series. So I would have something after it. That is in a similar genre, so... And I got all the series of this, so... I'm looking forward to reading it. Now, the last iffy one I have here... Artemis Fowl. Yes, I got this recently, I believe. And this is different in a way than those other two, but it's a similar one as well. It's more like a... What is it? A, not a spy, it's a fantasy, but it's kind of like a different type of fantasy, you know, in a way. So I figured this might be a good change of pace if I want something a little less really magical that way. And going on to this, I heard this series was a really good series. I don't have every book in the series, but I got the first few, four, I believe. So I have a good lead on that, too. The final book that I have, guys. This one I just really thought about adding recently because I read the first one. The Babysitter 2. The one that I got by accident the first time around. I figured I did finish the first one. I had this forever. And this is a horror one besides Goose, but it was a little bit harder. Figured I'd need this in the mix, you know, to break it up. Now, guys, keep in mind, also, I'm not reading all these at once. 
I'm going to really select the ones that I'm in the mood for and read as much as I can until I can decide whether to finish or DNF it, a new phrase I can I learned. But hopefully I'll read a majority of them and I'll learn to make time to read and enjoy it. As I said, my ability to process and focus are not great, to say the least. I need to work on that. So, like, if I'm not into it, I will not focus, but I want to learn to kind of at least force myself to give something a chance before quitting it. And I gave Watership Down a chance, and my god, it's good to a degree. Like, it, it, the story is, it's lovely, but I can barely understand it. I mean, okay, I know you don't have to understand everything, right? But for me, I, I can't get into the atmosphere. And sometimes for people, that's a lot, right? That's a big thing for people, right? So, th before I do finish this video, I did also forget to mention I'm DNF in YouTuber's Life. There was the other ones that I've mentioned that I haven't brought up, I probably DMF'd to a degree. The ones I mentioned are the main ones on my mind to play. So... Oh, and if there is one other game I might add, it's What Remains of Eda Fitch. That would be the last game I would think of adding as a bonus. So anyway, guys, I'm sorry this was a little long, but I had a lot on my mind. got to go through a lot of this stuff, so if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and like what you see, please subscribe. It helps this channel a lot. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you know when new videos are coming out. And I'll see you guys in my next video.